the second epistle of John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Okay, we pick up now. Here we are. Receive a commandment. Let I make some notes here. It says, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Now, when you talk Bible and you mention the word commandment, the first thing that comes to mind is what? The Big Ten. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. That's over in Exodus 20. But what you don't realize, for the born-again Christian, we have commandments too. Matter of fact, Paul in his writings for the commandments backs up nine of the Ten Commandments. And mentions them and writes them, all but keeping the Sabbath. Ephesians 5, you still see the commandment there that the children to honor their parents. We're saved by grace. And grace alone by the Lord Jesus Christ outside of no works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But after we are saved. Our free will would be to obey, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not covet. Those are good and great for a Christian walk. It gives you character. It gives you the ability to witness somebody. Why would you want to listen to somebody who was a false witness? And yet that's one of the big ten. We're not saved by the law, but the law would be proper in some aspects. Now, we're not going to bring an animal to the sacrifice. No, that's done with, the Bible says. But when it comes to our conduct to God and our neighbor, saved or lost, it is perfectly improper not to have an idol and to have God first in our life. God's command is that his children walk in truth and love. You're not to be a liar. You're not to lie. You are to bow out, come up and say, yes, I did that. When somebody says, did you do that? And even if it's going to make trouble, even if you're going to be in trouble, and I have found in my own personal experience that when you've done something wrong and you owe up to it, the consequences are really not that hard because if they know you are an honest person, in some cases they will work with you and it will be as less as you thought it would be if you had just told a lie. And love. Hate is not the word here. And yes, God hates things. Yes, in Psalms we are told as believers, as children of God, we are to hate evil. But God is love when we're dealing with people. When we're dealing with God's children, our brethren, when we're dealing with lost people, you've got to be truth and love. Religion deals with the untruth. John 8.44 Truth can be unclear and general. But God's commandments
trying to read here. When they printed this thing out, it, some words don't have no spaces. So forgive me. God's commit command com, uh, commandments atten attention is the truth on specific areas of your life. The commandments show or the commandments come from your loving heavenly father as an expression of his love and not just a matter of law. See, we're not under the law. I don't have to. But in truth and love, I would want to. I would want to see the protection of people around me. If I dig a hole, I'm not under law. I'm not going to put, but I would put barriers up around it so people would know there's a hole and they wouldn't fall in. I would want to help a neighbor in a distress. I would not want to put a, a, a yoke upon a Christian if I lend them money. God gives his commandments to help you and not to help, not to hurt you. God doesn't want to hurt you. Look at 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. If it is grievous for you to think, thou shalt not commit adultery, you need to get on your knees and get right with God. If you are a Christian and you're selling used cars, and it is grievous for you to think thou shalt not bear false witness, you need to repent. If you are in a church that's got idol worship, You need to get out of it. They're not grievous. And maybe one of these days, maybe I should break out a lesson on the, the tent. Because when you break one, you break them all. You can't just break one of those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, well, you didn't think of God first. So there goes the first commandment. And the Bible says, the tenth commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Well, you just broke, thou shalt not commit adultery. You just broke the covenant. You just broke God first. And in most cases, you're going to lie about it unless you're in America, so you're going to false witness. And it just goes on and on and on. You are, if you are a child of God and you love the Lord, you ought to love others. And you ought to love to want to do right. And that is what the Ten Commandments show you, is how to do right. You have no reason to fear your father and be in obedience to his word. And it is an expression of your love to him. When we step out the bounds of loving the Father and do what we want to do in sins, we show our love passing from God to self. When we break the commandments, when we sin, is we're telling God, I am more important than you. I love the flesh more than I love you. Then you, re then you break the first commandment down. You take God off the throne. You put him down the footstool. And you step up and you sit down with your flesh. And say, reign and worship me. I don't care what you say, God. And that is disobedience. False teachers usually reflect negativity upon God's commandments. As if they were harsh and harmful. 
or teach a lie. There's a religion out there who say, thou shalt not murder. And they'll go into the prison house and they'll have their signs and they'll sit there when, when they're going to put a, a convict guilty of a crime, guilty of murder, when they're going to execute him. And thou shalt not murder, God said. Yeah, but God told Israel to go in the land of Canaan and kill. There's another religion out there. Well, we're not going to do military service because the Bible says thou shalt not murder. Yeah, but God told David to go fight. And then you break one, you know, you say, oh, don't break this commandment. But then you break the commandment about the idol worship. As a matter of fact, you can take that commandment out with an eraser and break number 10 into 2. Check out the Catholic uh, Ten Commandments. There is no image idol worship, number 2. It is, number 10 has been broken into 2. So they want you to for focus on thou shalt not murder so you don't see the one missing and the one broken. You can get messed up. Then they offer a fictional freedom that only leads to bondage. Look at 2 Peter 2.19. Oh, forgive me, I got allergies. 2 Peter 2.19. While they promise them liberty. The people out in their congregation, liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he brought into bondage a hypocrite. They give you liberty, liberty, liberty. Buy this candles, get this magazine out, get on your bike, pray towards this place, get on your mat. Uh, twiddle your beads, wear a cap, wear a gown, say this prayer, how many times a day? And then bondage is they can't tell you of a surety that when you die, where do you go? Where God tells us where we go. Assurity. The only way to really experience the freedom is to obey God's perfect will. And with the freedom comes peace. Listen, I mean law as a civil law. If a police car pulls in front of my house, and I am a law-abiding citizen, and he gets out of the car, I'm not going to fear. I have been given the freedom of peace that he may even come to my door. Now, unless he's going to break the law and arrest me, I have nothing to fear. Maybe he's coming for direction. Maybe, who knows? But when I obey God's perfect will, when I obey God's commandments, I don't need to fear the law. Because I'm doing right. We have, we have all heard the commandments again. But have you heard about the commandment? That thou shalt walk in truth. It says in verse 4, I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth. Have you heard that commandment? 
it, it is sad to say that there are men in the pulpit and women in the pulpit that do not obey that commandment. And yes, thou shalt walk in truth. That's a commandment. Just like thou shalt not. But here is it, thou shalt. Well, John, who is the writer of this epistle, talks much about commandments. And let's look at what John has to say about commandments. As we conclude this paragraph. Verses 1 and 4. The first place we'll turn to is the Gospel of John, 1334. The Gospel of John, 1334. A new commandment. Oh, a new commandment. Eleven. <laughs> I give unto you, Jesus speaking, me. this is Jesus speaking, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another, is to love the brother. Now we are commanded because some people are not lovable. Some people are irritating. Some people are weird. Some people just don't, are not our best interest. Some people, they're not like our likes. There are some people who are high class, and there are some people that are low class. But Jesus does not give a loophole. He says, love the brethren. Love one another. And he does not give an exception. You can't say that, oh, that, that, that guy up there that, that sits up there, and, oh, I don't like him. No, the Bible says you love him. Well, that guy over there, he, he, he was a, a child molester, and, and he, you know, he said he got saved, and love one another well those those kids over there that fair uh, love one another her love one another let's have, let's look at chapter 15 verse 12 this is my commandment Jesus speaking that ye love one another as I loved you how much did Christ love you? He died for you that you may live. You know how well you are to love one another? Enough to give your life for them. To lay your life down for the brethren or for all. This is my commandment that you love one another. You know, it says the same thing over, I think it's Ephesians 5, where it talks about the husband and wife. We're not going to get into that, but listen. How much do you are you to love your wife? Christ said as he gave himself for the church. You are to love one another, and you are to love your wife, husband. Got to say that today. To lay your life down. And that has been the testimony of a true Christian through the ages. Where some have put their necks out for others to live. There have been Christians who laid their life down for an unsaved person. Because they are going to be absent from the body and be with the Lord. 
while that lost person is left behind an opportunity to get saved. Whereas if he would died, he were going off to hell. Now, let me just throw this out there for five cents, whatever it's worth. Get you mad at me and unfriend me or whatever you want to do. You're holding a gun. And you're going to shoot somebody. Oh, in defense. Is that love? As Christ showed us the example of love, did Christ shoot anybody? Did Christ cut off the ear of the high priest's servant? Fifteen, seventeen. These things I command you. Oh, here's a command. That you love one another. You look out for one another. You pull a brother off to the side and say, hey, chapter and verse. You're not doing that right. You don't do it before everybody else. That's not love. That put them to shame. Love one another is when you help them with a financial, with a, uh, whatever it is. Or just to go up to him, just pat him on the back and say, Brother, I, I prayed for you this week. I was thinking about you the other night. I want to thank you. And when you do that, you go against your flesh. Because your flesh wants to say, me, myself, and I. How dare you put somebody in our place? Okay. We can go on. Uh, let's look at John three twenty three. John three twenty three. I have John two eight through ten, but I'll let you look at that yourself. John three twenty three. I don't know. Oh, that's First John. First John three twenty three. All right, the other one is 1 John 2, 8 through 10. 1 John 3, 23. Big difference when you put the first in front of it. 3, 23. This is John. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. So you're to be born again, and then you're to love others. Hatred of others is not a garnish of a Christian. It's not a work of a Christian to hate someone. You can hate evil. You can hate the evil that that person is doing, but don't hate the person. Pray for them. All right, John fourteen fifteen, the Gospel of John fourteen fifteen. And it says, If ye love me, do you love the Lord? Oh, I love Jesus. You do? Keep my commandments. The brethren, love the brethren, love all. Keep it. Do it. Loving Jesus is doing what he commands. Is Jesus God? Is God Jesus? Not for salvation, but the, the ten big commandments. We ought to keep them. You know, Paul doesn't meet, mention the Sabbath day. It would be perfectly and proper, which America is going away from. Give yourself one day of rest. Give your body a rest. Give your car a rest. Give your family a rest. Give your employees a rest. Give your wallet a rest. Give your feet a rest. We're not commanded to obey the Sabbath, but it'd be perfectly proper for you to have a rest.
and doing what Jesus said. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. That's a commandment. Go. There are some out there who are saved and born again and won't get baptized for whatever reason. And you're not doing what the commandments of Christ are and you don't love them. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And when you don't, you don't love Jesus. And we saw that with the Father, loving the Father. We don't love God, we don't love Jesus when we step away from in disobedience and do what we want to do. We put ourselves first. Now chapter 15, verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and by his love. If you want Jesus to continue to love you, you keep what he tells you to do. You keep doing it. You keep loving the brethren, no matter how hard that person is. And then Christ's love is abound, is abiding upon you. And then you are loving Christ. What a proper fellowship together with your Lord and Savior when you love him and he loves you back. But if you don't do what he tells you to do, where's the love? You got an angry father in heaven. And that angry father, and you're the child of God, he's got to bring out the rod. And yet, the Bible says that if you spare the rod, you don't love your child. God still loves us even when we're bad. But that love fellowship of that peace and the, of the greatness is, is temporary gone based upon our disobedience. Verse 14, the same chapter, 15, 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Doing what God and Lord Jesus Christ tells you to do gets his love returned upon you, shows your love to him, and you become friendship. There are songs in the hymnal, of a proper hymnal, about Jesus being our friend and our friend being Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Not if you do not do what you tell what he tells you to do. You can't say you love Jesus. You can't say Jesus loves you. And you can't say I have a friend in Jesus if you don't go lost, tell lost people about him. If there's one person that you do not like, you do not love Jesus, you, Jesus is withholding his love to you, and there's no friendship. If you are a false witness, you don't love God. God does not return his love to you. And there's no friendship. Because, you know, there are people out there, I just love Jesus. You've got to be very careful. You need to check yourself. Because you may not be. It's doing what he commands, and you get abiding and friendship. First John 2.4. 1 John 2.4. 2, this is John again. Look at what John has to say about the commandments. 1 John 2.4. He that saith, I know him. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a saved Christian. I'm saved. 
I go to church. And keepeth not his commandments. Okay. Let me finish the rest of the verse. Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. What did we say before? What, what was that commandment there in Second John? Walking in truth. Thou shalt walk in truth. If you say you know the Lord and you do not walk in his commandments, you are a liar. Go we'll read John 8, 44 and see whose side you take it. I didn't say that. 1 John 2, 4 said that. Saying and not doing equals liar. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only uh, deceiving yourselves. You go around telling everybody you're a Christian and you don't do what the, what the book tells you to do. You are a liar. Liar at what? Your profession of Christianity. And there are some Christians out there, you wish they just keep their mouth shut and don't say nothing at all. Because you're hurting the testimony of us who are trying to live right and trying to do what God told us to do. You are ruining the testimony. So you need to stop lying and shut your mouth. And start doing what God told you to do and open your mouth properly. Just trying to help you out. When you say but you don't do, the Bible says it's a liar. We can stop there, but we can go to chapter 3, verse 22, if you like. 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. A conditional cause for prayers being answered is you doing what God says. One cause of many, your prayers are not getting answered, maybe because you're not doing what God told you to do. Disobeying God is not going to get a, a prayer answer. And I said one of many. There may be many reasons why God is not answering your prayer. This could be one. God answers prayers in three ways. Yes, no, not now. And for some prayers that you need to have answered, in the seriousness of that, you ought to be doing what God tells you and tells you to do. Not to get the prayer answered, but because you love the Lord. See? You can't say, oh, I'm going to start doing what God wants me to do so I can start getting, you know, a million dollars. No, it ain't going to work. You got to do what you do because you love the Lord and you love God. And Christ will love you and will be your friend and then you'll... You'll get prayers answered. And that always doesn't mean yes. Sometimes the right Holy Father, sometimes the proper Father has to say no to your request. It's harmful. It's not needful. It's lustful. But that right prayer, the one that God does want to answer, that God does want to please us with that request, and because we please him, it is pleasing for him in love and friendship to say, here, it's yours. The last one, 323, don't have to go far. 
And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of the Son. We shall believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. And love one another as he gave us commandment. The commandment of salvation. Belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 4.12. So what are <coughs> excuse me, the two commandments for a Christian? That is given to us in the New Testament under grace. We got the Big Ten over there in Exodus 20. But what are the commandments to a Christian personally outside of those? Belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, number one. Then loving the brethren. Those are the two commandments for a Christian. Thou shalt not commit adultery is well and proper. Thou shalt not bear false witness is well and proper. Thou shalt not make no idols bow down. That is proper. Honor thy father and mother. That is proper. Thou shalt not murder. That is proper. Or thou shalt not kill. I've been saying murder. Excuse me. Thou shalt not kill. I'm saying that wrong. I apologize. But for a Christian, love the brethren. For the unsaved today during the church age, there is a commandment to you. Belief on Jesus Christ. You cannot love anybody unless you have God who is love and you are saved and born again by Jesus Christ. And no way can you say as a lost person that Christ loves me and I love Jesus if you have not believed the commandment to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll close. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Make a joyful noise.